Welcome to Forest Namesake. I'm Valentine. This is my mom. Hello. And uh, on the community post a while back, my dad posted if you had any topical questions. And we're so grateful for those who put those questions in the community post. And some also left Q&A type questions. So we're going to do those. And we also came up with some ourselves. And this is just another way for you to get to know us. But the whole focus, again, is for his namesake, and we want to be um, honoring to God in our answers. So, Mommy, what is a great day or a great day that you've had, or what would you consider a great day? Well, there's been lots of great days, but I like all the days when our family uh, of five would travel. We are, it has been our goal as a family to travel all 50 states in the United States of America and so far we've been to 37. Most of those by car which because you can see so much more by car than you can flying in. Uh, but the one particular day that just really stands out for me is believe it or not in California we took a train from up north, I want to say it was the Redwood Forest, somewhere up there, and we took a train all the way down to Santa Cruz, and um, it was an out, it was an outdoor. It it had a let me just back up. It's a regular train, people train, but there was a car on the train that was outdoor. You could sit outside and let the wind just blow in your face. And I love that. That was exciting. I remember uh, our son was just a, a little boy sitting on my lap, and th I, that was so much fun. It, it, I, I mean, just looking around at, at everything around Beautiful. us. <laughs> yeah. And then it brought us to uh, Santa Cruz, where they have the um, outdoor um, boardwalk. You'll have to look it up. It, look up Santa Cruz. And you'll see an outdoor, uh, learn about an, uh, an outdoor boardwalk that they have there with a lot, a lot of little shops, and they have a Ferris wheel and other little rides, and and it's right by the ocean. Oh, so beautiful! I mean, imagine a train just, just stopping right there. I mean, how awesome is that? That was a great day. That was a wonderful day, and I liked walking on the boardwalk and all those people and and seeing all the little shops where they had made homemade things, and yeah. That was probably a really wonderful day of, you know, we've gone through a lot of travels, but that one just really stood out for me. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to ask Valentine the same <laughs> question. When is a great day for you? Well, in general, a great day for me is a day of uh, just joy. And I know as Christians, you're supposed to have the joy of the Lord, but I'm talking about a day where there's not so much stress. When everyone's getting along and everything just feels so happy. A good day. Yes. You know? You know? <laughs> it's Just a, a peaceful, wonderful day where you feel content. Yes. That, that's a good day for me. That is a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'll start with the next question. Nay, this is what one of our viewers um, or subscribers asked. Uh, what is a good, a good accomplishment of yours that you've done that you can... Not not to give ourselves airs, but something, you know, that you feel like you did a really good job at or a good, a uh, great accomplishment. <laughs> well, when I was a teenager um, and I was just getting into high school, there weren't a lot of options for me. It was either band or PE. And I'm not athletic, so the other only other option was band. And I didn't know how to read music. I, I had been in middle school choir, and even then I was, I'm a slow learner. Just being honest with you, it takes me a while to catch on quickly when others are really fast at that. I have to really work at it. And reading music was very difficult for me. So I had to learn how to read music again, and I had to pick an instrument. And it wasn't the piano like I was used to at home. We had a, a very cheap keyboard where you can't even do all the chords. It's just like one little, one little key. Um, so... I went with the clarinet and I went through an instructor but goodness me that was really really <laughs> hard I mean you're having to use a lot of air and I'm not used to that so and I had to learn how to march it was a marching band and kind of like a military type march so all yeah. of that at once very multitasking <laughs> I just don't do that but 
by God's grace, he got me through it. Yeah. And at the same time, um, I had wanted to not ha wear glasses anymore. I wanted contacts. And that was another milestone to to get through. Yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that was four four things in one one, right? Yeah. Learning learning to read music, learning to the play the clarinet, learning to march, march. in a marching band and keep up with everybody else <laughs> while playing the instrument, while doing the music, and then also getting used to the contact lenses which took some time for her to get used to because it's not easy I mean it looks easy people just pop those things in and out but it, it took her many days almost to the point where she would be crying yeah. and and saying I'm about to give up I'm about to give up but then she finally it's very mentally it. yeah I think we I, I thought about it too much about something actually going into my eye yes. and the reason why I'm not wearing contacts today is one they're very expensive and at this time it's just not even feasible in our living conditions for me to wear contacts. And they were, uh, over many years, they were bothering my eyes, so I don't even know if I'll be able to wear them again, which is kind of sad. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> yeah. And as far as more of a godly focus on my accomplishments would be going to Indonesia for four months, away from my family, where I homeschooled three children and because their parents were learning the language in a, a tribe, an isolated tribe that you can only get to by boat. So, yeah, those are all great yeah. accomplishments. How about yeah. you? Yeah, well, my great, greatest accomplishment was actually in high school. I know that's many years ago, but I went to an all girls boarding school in Pennsylvania uh, because my parents were again in the oil business, so they were in Indonesia, and I needed the school ended at eighth grade, so anybody who wants to go, of course, to high, you know, high school and beyond, needed to go to the United States or to Singapore. And um, I, my parents just felt like Singapore was not a good place at that time, so they had me go to an all-girls boarding school in Pennsylvania. Um, there, I went there for um, three plus years and graduated and um, they had these awards that they gave to each student. They had a science award, they had um, an English award, they, depending on the best student for the prize. And I was able to receive all three art awards, which was the music award, uh, piano, at that time I was doing piano, and I was also in the choir and triple trio, which is select choir groups that have to audition in order to get into the group. And then I was also on the uh, drama team, so I did a lot of plays. Uh, I love acting. And, um, and then, uh, see, so music, drama, and dance. Yeah, so, and when I say dance, it was not ballet, it was more of, um, I don't know how to explain it. Back in the day, back in the 1980s, <laughs> that, that kind of dance, whatever that, some kind of movement dance. So I got all three awards, and they had said that that was the first time in the history of that school, and at that time it was already over 100 years old, that anyone had gotten all three art awards, performing art awards. Now, I'm not trying to give myself airs, but to me, we're talking about accomplishments, so that would have to be the greatest accomplishment that I can ever remember receiving all at once. That was that was so amazing. <laughs> so, but I have to give all the credit to God because God gave me those gifts. Mm -hmm. God is the one get, that gives us our gifts of music and acting and dance and, and any other uh, gift that we have. That's all from the Lord. So in the end, God gets the glory. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm so glad he gave my mom that gift because I'm very musically inclined myself, so I think I got that from my mom. <laughs> yeah, and speaking of music, another subscriber asked, uh, besides hymns, what other Christian music we like? Um, contemporary, classical, so. Right. Um, my okay yeah, you I'll first. answer first <laughs> as far as classical music is concerned I, I have to be honest with y'all I don't like classical music I like it in p piano forms every now and then like um, now I don't, since I don't know my composers who does the F Elisa Beethoven I'm completely off key right now but you know I like it in piano forms to an extent um, but that's about it. I'm, I'm not a classical person, so I, I couldn't even mm. tell you my favorite composer. And as far as any other types of Christian forms of music, I do like contemporary music. Uh, the rest of my family is not keen on contemporary. 
uh, for whatever for their reasons, <laughs> and they can tell you someday. But I actually like contemporary music, and I like the um, the Wow Worship, which was basically around the two, early two thousands. Uh, check it out. You know, it's called Wow Worship, and they have a whole bunch of artists, Christian artists, that do um, different songs, and I really like. Um, that kind of music and I do like praise pra praise and worship music that those are my favorite Christian uh, types of music like I said I'm not a hymn person I'm, I think I wrote that somewhere I'm I'm, I'm kind of fairly new to hymns so within the past two years really actually liking hymns and liking them for their words more than anything else so yeah <laughs> that's those are my kinds now it's up now it's your turn <laughs> well I love hymns I grew up with hymns in very um, old churches uh, where there were wooden pews and all they sang were hymns so I got very accustomed to it and the music has always struck me first as I got older then I concentrated more on the words and I think they're just beautiful and convicting and not many songs are written like that anymore today which is a shame most songs are all about me 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 but I don't want to get into a rant I think if that's why I don't like contemporary music as in the latter 2010s to 2020s I just don't but I do like um, 90s worship music and maybe even early 2000s like praise music I'm not really a big fan of heavy drums <laughs> where it's just too loud for me like a rock concert yeah <laughs> I mean I don't like I don't mind like clapping but <laughs> even then just keep it in moderation <laughs> <laughs> and I also like um, Hebrew Messianic music. Um, when I was about two years old, my parents and I, we went to Israel. I have no recollection of it, but they did bring back, uh, what do you CDs. call those? Things? No, not CD. This is back in, oh, cassette tape. Cassette tape, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we had a cassette player. <laughs> um, and on it was, I think their names were Barry and Batya Segel. I might have familiar. said their last name wrong, but I love the songs and when I got older I purchased their CD. So that was my introduction to Hebrew Messianic music and it's just beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> and he also asked about which classical composers, if any, he mentioned Handel and Bach and Palestrina. I've never heard of Palestrina, so I guess I'll have to look into that. Thank you for suggesting him. Yeah. I do like Bach, Handel, I love um, my grandmother, when I was about nine years old, she came to our apartment and she gifted me and my sister with two CDs of classical works. And one of them was Water Music by Handel. And from that moment, I just loved classical music. And that song will always be one of my favorites. Just brings me a lot of joy. Nice, nice. Okay, next question on the list is, have you ever met a well-known Christian? Um, not personally met, but when I was, I forgot how old, Isaiah was, or my brother was already born, so I guess I was about 10 or 11. No, now you have to edit that part out, I think I was 14. <laughs> <laughs> okay, when I was a teenager, um, we went to a church, uh, one of those more mega churches, yes. and one night they were having a conference by Tate, I think his first name was Michael Tate, and our, our youth group was going to his concert, and I was not familiar with it, I don't go to a lot of concerts, they're very loud, <laughs> and that day was particularly loud, but I did get to see someone well known and if you know him today I believe he is now part of the group called Mercy Me. A lot a lot of band members have changed over the years so yeah that was my okay. introduction. How about you? Well I um, had heard about and you've probably heard them too uh, Marcia and uh, Martin rather Martin and Gracia Burnham they were taken hostage um, by the uh, let me see if I can say it right Abu Sayyaf um, radical group in the Philippines I think it was in the year 2001 and they were held captive and hostage for hostages for over just over a year 
and along with about 12 other people they were celebrating their um, Martin and Gracia were celebrating their 18th um, wedding anniversary at a resort in the Philippines. They were already living in the Philippines, but then they went to this resort to celebrate their anniversary and just happened to be there at the wrong time and were taken hostage by several of these uh, militant type men with guns and I don't know what else and had to go through brutal circumstances in the jungles of the Philippines and um, hardly any food. It was a pretty bad ordeal and she wrote a book called In the Presence of My Enemies. I highly recommend it. Me and Valentine, we've both read it and it is wow. I mean, I'm just getting chills right now that it's literally a, a she writes really well and it keeps you at the edge of your seat. It's a true story written by a Christian I, and she was a missionary. They were missionaries there in the Philippines. So I love missionary stories and I was I actually prayed while I was reading this book. Dear God, I pray that someday I will be able to meet this woman this woman of the Lord I mean wow would you believe I had that opportunity I went to a missions conference uh, several years after that happened and she was there and I got to you know not only buy her book and get her autograph but she actually shook my hand that was so that was so cool and I told her I've always wanted to meet you <laughs> so I mean usually you say that to a famous person like you know a rock star <laughs> or <laughs> uh, an actress but you know who'd want to meet a missionary I did and I did. It was so exciting. <laughs> so yeah, that and was uh, good. and so then uh, I guess I'll lead us into the next question. What person in today's time has inspired you, and why? There have been many, but one in particular is Johnny Erickson Tata. When she was, I guess, a teenager or in her early early twenties, she took a bad diving accident and paralyzed her her neck and her back, or broke her spine, something to that effect. But to this day, she is still paralyzed. She's a quadriplegic, um, which means she can probably only move a bit of her neck and head and maybe a little bit of her shoulders, but the rest not. And she is in chronic pain from the places that she can't feel every single day. Excruciating pain, I'm told, um, has to affect her nerves. But yet she is still able to have a smile on her face. She paints with her mouth. You have to look up her paintings. They yeah, are beautiful. so beautiful. Mm -hmm. It just brings me tears thinking about it. Yeah. And she does speak a lot about suffering and how um, that is our calling as a Christian is to suffer, but Christ is with us in the midst of the suffering. Our suffering is not for nothing. It is never in vain. God doesn't look down and say, yeah, you're suffering. So look up her talks about that. It's very inspiring and I would like to meet her myself one day. And she also has a ministry called Johnny and Friends where their ministry reaches out to those who are isolated, especially in foreign countries where they don't have wheelchairs. And a lot of the parents are having to pick up their children everywhere they go, or the kids can't even leave their home just because it's so much of a hassle. So yeah. their ministry brings wheelchairs to them, custom made. So nice. look them up, you'll be encouraged. Yeah. How about you? Is well, there a person who's inspired you? I, um, I'm glad that you asked me that because I actually don't have one particular person, but missionaries, Christian missionaries mm. in general, inspire me greatly. Um, they're a great, huge encouragement to me because they're willing to go at the drop of a hat and just go wherever. I mean, I mean, I've had missionary friends who just, they've never been overseas and yet they went to Ethiopia, for example. Um, goodness me, out in the boonies somewhere, with harsh living conditions. Yeah, I would have to say missionaries. I, don't, I can't really pinpoint any one particular person right now that really inspires me, but I'd have to say missionaries. Because, and then the question was why? Because, because they are willing to take risks. They are willing to, to die for the Lord in any circumstance and put up with harsh circumstances. And a lot of times these are missionaries that have families or that will get, fam the, you know, they get pregnant while they're there and have to have their babies go through really difficult circumstances. So yeah, those people definitely are a huge inspiration to me. I've always wanted to be a missionary, but now I know why God never called me on the mission field because I couldn't do that. That That is no way, no way I could not do that. It was hard just for four months. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. I've lived overseas, but um, you know, I had, I was pretty well, well taken care of. We lived in a good home, uh, but as far as 
just saying, oh yeah, God, wherever you want me to go, that's where I'll go. That's not me, but I truly am inspired by missionaries. So if you're a missionary and you're watching this, I would love to hear your story. I love true story missionary stories. I love it. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or if you know of any other missionaries, we've mentioned some, I think, on this channel before. But if you know of any others and they have a great book written about it, about them, what they went through, please put it down down below in the description area. I'm not the description, but in the in the comments. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I guess I'll bring us up into the next final question, which is, um, what is one thing God has taught you during this homeless journey, Valentine? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Uh, there's been so many. I don't know if I could even pinpoint one. I guess one would be how I used to take so much for granted. And you would think I would have learned that in Indonesia. And even in Indonesia, it wasn't that bad. Even in the tribe, um, the missionary family, missionary family I was with, we had food and water and all that kind of stuff. And a generator from time to time. But, you know, in America... <laughs> you get kind of acclimated to privileges and things. And now that I'm homeless, I could see um, that we shouldn't take so much for granted. Be grateful that you do have food to eat. And though I get tired of the same kind of food a lot, I do miss our home-cooked meals and dessert. <laughs> I miss all kinds of things. But uh, God reminds me how much I have to be grateful for where there are so many people. And lots of people could talk about Africa. And I've been to Africa too, but even here in America, there are people who don't have a lot to eat. So I have to be very grateful for that and having a roof, even though it is a truck, over my head when so many are out in the elements. Yeah. You know, yeah. so much to be thankful for. I guess thank thankfulness is one thing I've learned. Yes. And me, that kind of goes along the same lines, but more so for me, it's... Um, what I've learned most is, or what God has taught me most is, don't be judgmental of, of the homeless. Because I, even now, in our homeless situation, um, I look at, a lot of the homeless people in our city and where we live are men. And I'd say they look, around, they look like they're in their 60s maybe. But, and I, I don't mean to be rude, but a lot of them are smoking. Yeah. And so I'm wondering, if you're homeless, where do you get the money for the cigarettes? I was at uh, um, HEB, that's a grocery store here in Texas, for those of you who are watching overseas, and they, were, they had cigarettes for sale behind a glass case, and it tells you how much a case is. A case is about yay long, I think, with packages of cigarettes in them, and each package has I don't know how many cigarettes in it. But nevertheless, they're, kinda, they're really expensive. For me, I, I mean, I looked at one, and it was like $35 for a package of cigarettes who has that kind of money I'm thinking surely not a homeless person uh, so I'm very judgmental I'm like oh my goodness I cannot believe that man is homeless and he's smoking a cigarette or oh my goodness that man is homeless and he's obviously on drugs because he's acting strange or oh my goodness and drugs is even more expensive than cigarettes I would think or he's he's drinking and he's getting drunk or uh, you know, I'm just constantly judging but I, God teaches me not to judge because I don't know their story. I, I, I'm so tempted. I'm so tempted, but as a woman, it'd be strange for me to go yeah. up to a man. You know, I'm married, and for me to go up to a man and say, "Hi, what's your story? Why are you homeless?" I'm just so curious. How? What brought you to this position that you're in right now? Did you lose a home? Did you lose a job? I mean, what happened? I, I would love to know their story. But I, it's just, it would be awkward for me to ask. So my main thing that I've learned is don't be judgmental, Martina, because you don't know their story. There's probably a reason why they're smoking. There's a reason why they're drinking themselves every night until they go to sleep. Or there's a reason why they're on drugs to uh, get away, get, get, uh, how do you say, to make their problems disappear. So that's, that's what I've learned. Don't, mm -hmm. Not to judge. And that's for anybody. I shouldn't judge anyone. I'm not, I'm not the judge. Christ is the judge. I think that says in the in the, in the Word of God, actually. Right. Christ is the judge. Not me. <laughs> so that's what I learned. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Well, we hope you enjoyed this Q&A, and we would like to hear your answers to Please. the same questions. So we always love yeah. reading the comments, and thank you to those who do. And if you have any other questions, Q&A type questions, or topic questions, 
um, like discussion questions, leave them in the comments below or check my the community page that my dad left on a post. Yes, and we'll be sure to have my husband put all these questions that we asked down in the description box so that, because you know, it might be difficult to remember everything or have to go back. And so he'll ask them all out and that way you can, if you'd like, you can answer all of them. That'd be fine too. We'll be okay with that. <laughs> we like to get to know you too since you're part of the YouTube family. Exactly. Yes. And we love to hear from you. We really do. And when we don't hear from some of y'all for some time, we start to get, uh, I do anyway, I can't speak for everyone else, but I get a little worried. And I and I actually say a little prayer and said, Lord, I pray that so-and-so is okay. We, they haven't left a comment in over a month. I hope that they're okay. <laughs> I actually worry about y'all. So please, we're, we love to hear from you. Don't be shy. <laughs> if you are shy, you can you can uh, email us. Yes. You can do that. Yeah. You can email us at, um, I think it's on our main page. You can find that out. Or my dad might just put in the description box. And if you have any prayers, leave them in the comment section below. Or again, shoot us an email. And we'll be happy to pray for you. Yeah, we like to pray for you. <laughs> and on that okay. note, we're going to say goodbye. And we appreciate it. If you hit the like bell and click the notification bell it's as you know when a video comes out and please subscribe because we like you to be part of our YouTube family definitely yeah <laughs> and we hope that you have a blessed day bye bye, -bye.